Welcome, Ben Mama. Somewhere on planet Earth, a scientist creates the ultimate machine. At last! A machine that will give him the power to journey into the mega world. With thousands of colors, 16-bit graphic technology, and 10-channel mega stereo sound. The most advanced video game system in the universe. Yes! Mega Drive from Sega. Even if you only have a passing interest in retro gaming, you're going to be more than aware of the Sega Mega Drive and Sega Genesis for those of you who are in North America. It's widely regarded as one of the best consoles of all time and rightly so with its amazing library of around a thousand different titles, excellent controllers and of course having been the first home of a certain Blue Hedgehog. But for all you do know about the Sega Mega Drive, we'd be willing to bet that there's a great deal you don't know too. So here at the Laird's Lair we thought it was time to lift the lid on the 16-bit powerhouse and reveal 10 facts you probably never knew about this classic system. Let's start off with one that you probably did know. With sales of around 40 million units, the Mega Drive still stands tall as Sega's most successful console. In fact, it does it by quite a margin, with the Master System topping 14 million, followed by the Dreamcast and Saturn at just under 10 million units apiece. This figure still has room to rise even further too, as new versions of the machine are still being sold by manufacturers such as At Games and Tectoy in Brazil, as well as the official Sega Mega Drive Mini of course. And speaking of our Brazilian friends at Tectoy, did you know that they never stopped manufacturing or retailing their own versions of the Mega Drive in South America? This means that although Sega themselves stopped selling the Mega Drive in the rest of the world in 1998, the system was never actually discontinued due to the presence of the officially licensed Tectoy models in Brazil. Tectoy even continued producing new games for the Mega Drive well after we had all forgotten about it, with titles such as Duke Nukem 3D, which you can see here in the background, Woody Woodpecker, and Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Sega! Tech Toy were not the only company to officially license the Mega Drive for their own home market, however, as Korean electronic giant Samsung, yes, the mobile phone manufacturers, also did the same. Due to historical tensions between Japan and South Korea, the government of the latter had banned all imports of Japanese products into their country. This meant that many companies licensed their products out to local manufacturers in South Korea. Samsung had previously sold their own version of the Sega Master System in their homeland, called the Game Boy, and then followed suit with the Mega Drive 2, renaming it the Super Game Boy. Both were very successful for the company. Anyone who's into the Mega Drive will be well aware of the excellent power base converter, which allows you to play Sega Mars System games on your 16-bit beast. But did you all know that this add-on doesn't really do anything at all? That's because the Mega Drive hardware is already backwards compatible with the Mars System, thanks to being an evolution of the same hardware. All the power base converter does is change the shape of the cartridge slots for you so the games fit. You can test this for yourself by simply using a Mega Ev Drive cartridge and filling it with Mars System ROMs. Your Mega Drive will play them flawlessly. Ooh. Unpleasant odors. You have just been invaded by Sega TV. Tonight, we bring you wildlife. <laughs> this is Megan, start of a new Sega game. Megan, what's it like to be a Mega CD star? <laughs> You try dying 2,000 times a day! Hey you! Yeah you! Billy from Romford! You don't zap her on my show! The weather! Weather is... Whether you could do this move! Ah. Commercial break! Sega Mega Drive! Got one? Now you can get Mega CD! Oh, quick, take the trip! Whoa! 
It comes in seven games and even plays your music, PD! Okay, Megan, let's get interactive. <laughs> <laughs> now that's what I call Mega CD. It's very rare that any console keeps the name it was given during the development phase, and they often go through several other names too before the manufacturer settles on one that it likes. The Mega Drive is no different in this respect, as the original name designated by Sega was the Mark V. This might sound strange, but it does make sense, as it followed on from previous consoles with the two different versions of the Sega SG-1000, Mark I and Mark II, and then the Mark III, which was subsequently turned into the Master System for the West, and designated Mark IV and thus Mark V is the Mega Drive. It would seem weird calling the Mega Drive or Genesis that today though, it just doesn't have the same ring to it. Sega! And from one rejected name to another with this great little factoid. When Sega came to release the Mega Drive in North America, they discovered that another company who produced hard drives already owned the trademark. This meant that they would have to come up with something else and decided to go with Tomahawk, as they felt this was very American sounding. Obviously this name didn't stick and the reasons why will be revealed as we head on to the next entry in this list. Sega! Without doubt my favourite fact about the Mega Drive is that the North American version of the system wasn't going to be a Sega console at all. After Sega failed to achieve success with the Master System in North America, they decided to cut ties with their distributor, toy company Tonka, and turn to somebody else instead. That somebody was Atari, who, at the time, were the number two player in that region behind Nintendo, and already had a strong legacy in video games. It was in fact Atari who changed the name to Genesis, meaning a new beginning. But the deal fell through when Atari CEO Jack Trammell was refused European distribution, which had already been given to Virgin Mastertronic. If you want to know more about this story in particular, then I have done a separate video on it. So follow the link to watch the story of the Atari Genesis. Sega! There were a lot of different add-ons released to the Sega Mega Drive over the years. Some of these were good, such as the Sega Mega CD and aforementioned power-based converter, but others were not so good, like the Mega Answer. This strange device was only ever sold in Japan and brought a wide range of new functions to your Sega Mega Drive such as online banking, the ability to connect up a printer and act as an answering machine to collect all your missed calls. It's safe to say that the device was less successful and the Mega Answer was never considered for other markets. The Mega Answer was far from the only unit that took your Mega Drive online though, as there were far more useful services available too. There was the Sega Mega Modem in Japan, which allowed games such as Cyberball and Nikan Sports Pro Baseball to be played online, while in America, Sega released a different version of the device that allowed users of Time Warner's cable service to download and play 50 different games, some of which were exclusive to the service such as Teddy Bear Blues and Pengo. The lineup of games changed constantly and also let subscribers play demos of new and up and coming releases too. Shortly afterwards, a third party competitor was released in the form of the X Band, which allowed proper online play. Sadly, this was less than successful, mainly due to the high costs and poor internet speeds of the time. Anyone who is a Sega Genesis owner back in the day will be more than familiar with the slogan Sega does what Nintendo don't and the many claims centred around it, most notably the infamous Blast Processing. In more modern years people have claimed to have debunked all of Sega's advertising as misleading lies with no factual evidence. In fact many people will simply scoff if you even mention the term Blast Processing in the present day. So what if I told you that Blast Processing is a real thing and very much based in fact? Well kind of. So let me explain in a bit more detail. The Mega Drive has a Multirola 68000 CPU that runs at 7.6 MHz, while its great rival the Super Nintendo has a Ricoh 5A22 running at just 3.58 MHz. From those numbers it's clear to see which system is faster, but it's not just down to that. A big speed boost is also gained from the fact that the Mega Drive has a 16-bit data bus, while the Super Nintendo's bus is only 8 bits wide, a real bottleneck. Lastly, there's the fact that the Mega Drive also has a second processor, 
a Zilog Z8 running at 3.5 MHz. This gives extra support when needed to the main CPU, such as the drawing of 3D polygons. This is why such a huge amount of SNES games feature extra chips in the cartridge to boost performance, while the Mega Drive only has one such game in Virtua Racing, Blast Processing indeed. Genesis Dutch! 16-bit arcade graphics. You can't do this on Nintendo! Genesis Dutch! 16-bit sports action. You can't do this on Nintendo! Genesis Dutch! Genesis Dutch! Genesis Dutch! Genesis Dutch! Genesis Dutch! Get Joe Montana free, Pat Riley free, Buster Douglas free, Super Monaco GP free, or Collins free. What Nintendo not Buy a 16-bit Genesis system between now and October 31st and get an extra game. And that rounds up my top 10 list of amazing Sega Mega Drive facts. I hope you enjoyed this little trivia quest and please let me know if you know any obscure Sega Mega Drive facts of your own. I always love to hear from my viewers and join in with the retro gaming community whenever possible. Before I go though I must thank all of my loyal patrons for continuing to support my channel and make videos like this possible. However I must give special thanks to the following patrons in particular for their much appreciated pledges. Mitchell Valentino, James Taylor, Neptune, Chaotic, Seth Robinson, Carl Olsen, DOS Gamer Man, and my new high level patron, Electron Star Collapse. If you want to help support all my creative endeavours, including this YouTube channel, then please go and check out my Patreon right now. You can get access to a host of extra content, including downloads, exclusive videos, creative insights, and much more besides. I've been the Laird, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you all again for another video very soon.